This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Clueless Day Trading Frank. It's approximately 9.07 p.m. on August 9, 2020. Welcome. This is our regular weekly uh, weekend strategic webinar where we attempt to make some intelligent technical forecasts on the upcoming week and going forward. And that's what we'll attempt to do again today. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. These sessions are recorded, uploaded within 20, 25 minutes after we finish directly on the real-time Twitter feed, where just to remind everyone again, we have a lot of new people, so just remind everyone, all my content is delivered first and foremost on the real-time Twitter feed. That's the place. And then by uh, tomorrow, It'll be up, uh, or maybe a bit later tonight, depending on the uh, depending on uh, uh, timing. Um, it will be uploaded to the YouTube channel, uh, Plutusate underscore Trading YouTube, which you guys are very familiar with. So, so that's it. So let's uh, let's begin. We're going to try to keep this reasonably short. Pretty exhausted from a lot of stuff over the weekend, so I need to. Planning to hit bed a little bit early, so hopefully that'll be a good thing and uh, start fresh this uh, starting tomorrow. It's going to be a busy week, like always, and uh, this week I think is going to be uh, maybe a little bit more trickier. So let's you know let's go over that. So first and foremost, uh, the big news uh, over the weekend, which I'm sure all of you are aware of, is we didn't uh, yet. The word is yet reach the reach an agreement on the fifth uh, government stimulus package i believe we're going to get one within the next couple of days so president trump has taken his executive powers and gone ahead and uh, pushed out a bunch of the measures um and uh, you guys can all read about that however that is not the full stimulus package the check that comes for uh, people within a certain income bracket uh, is not part of that uh, executive power uh, act that President Trump took. So, anyways, so that's at least you know at least there's something uh, uh, that's in the works. Whichever the case, I again do believe that the package, just like everything else that the government does, will be hammered out at the last minute, and um, so we should be aware of that. Number two, there was a lot of there's a, there's a flurry of uh, corporate uh, rumors and activity on the TikTok front. As you know, that uh, we have uh, we're we've basically gone ahead and uh, uh, President Trump is basically you know administration is basically moving ahead to ban TikTok um, from being uh, the TikTok app from the U.S. So there's a flurry of activity. First, last week, the news was that Microsoft was very close to buying the U.S. operations. Then now there's news coming out that, uh, and then there was news that Apple might be interested. So now there's news that Twitter is very interested in buying TikTok, which would be pretty amazing, if you ask me. And, uh, and then there's rumors that Netflix is interested in buying TikTok. So who knows what, but these are, viable alternatives so that um, the U.S. operations, at least of TikTok, is bought by a U.S. company that can be monitored and uh, is from a national security standpoint safe. So whichever the case, there should be some, there should be some uh, activity and movement in stocks which are in the, in the, uh, on the social uh, app site. So let's see. Let's see what happens. If TikTok is fully banned in the U.S., then of course one of the biggest beneficiaries is uh, Facebook, uh, which just released a uh, similar. I heard. I mean, I haven't seen it. I'm not a big Facebook guy. Um, similar type of TikTok type of thing on their on their platform. So that's one of the reasons why Facebook was running too. Just so you know, you know. So. Uh, so social uh, media stocks, specifically the ones which have to do with social uh, engagement, are going to be in play. So we'll be keeping an eye on Snap and Twitter and Facebook and 
those type of companies. All right. Even Pinterest, P-I-N-S, that's a stock I missed, the earnings. Uh, no, not the earnings, when they ran up the other day. Yeah, it was earnings, I think, and it was up huge. So that's Pinterest, P-I-N-S. So I'll be, uh, and the stock is right now, yeah, pretty much at the all-time high. So it's, um, so we'll be keeping an eye on those type of things. It's going to be a busy stock week, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, selective stocks will do what they do. And then you'll have the rest of the market uh, going through the normal volatility gyrations that we are used to. So you guys, uh, you guys are all with me so far, right? Yep. Oh, okay, sounds good. Now, from an economic standpoint, just so that we're pretty well rounded to understand what's going on, one is obviously the stimulus package, which, uh, fingers crossed, I know they'll do it. They'll have to do it. Both parties has to have to do it. Um, what do you call? Is going to be coming this week? When exactly? No idea. So we're going to pull this in before we get into the charts and all that stuff. You guys can always, you know, these are these are free uh, uh, web uh, websites, economyday.com, fantastic website, all the economic numbers and everything that are coming out and explanations. You can click on them and everything, and it's 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 pretty damn good. I've been using it for years. So we are kicking off uh, this two, uh, 2020. August 10th is tomorrow. I just want to get the dates right. So let me start kicking off the ones which uh, are going to have a material impact on the markets without getting into too much detailed explanations. We have the Joel's jobs numbers. This is one of the, one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, data. Uh, so somebody has to mute, some, somebody has to mute their mic. I'm getting a lot of feedback. I can't hear myself speak. So yeah, thank you. So the Joel's data uh, is important. If you don't know what Joel says, then go ahead and type it in Investopedia. And then you'll know what the definition is. It has to do with payroll and and and, and jobs. And so this is this is an important number at 10 a.m. So that's that's the only thing that I can see for tomorrow. Uh, these uh, government uh, six-month bill, three-month bill auctions are important, but they are only really important if there is a wide variation in the in the uh, bid to ask uh, uh, auction process. If there's no demand, then obviously not good. If there is demand, it's good, all that good stuff. So aside from that, it's not that big a deal at this point. On Tuesday, we kick off uh, the Small Business Optimism Index, somewhat important, not that critically important. We know that small business is, is excited about the future, but they're very worried about the present. We already know that. The PPI number is important. That has to do with inflation. That's at 830. So this will certainly have a market moving effect. Then we have the um, uh, then we have uh, the government bill uh, 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 government auctions again on the bond side, on the bill side, and then we have uh, then we have Fed speakers. Mary Daly looks like a new name. I haven't come across that before. So this is the, this is the more important number that comes out at eight thirty. Somebody please mute their mic. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Please, it's it's very difficult to continue with the webinar. You know when I'm getting feedback. Uh, so okay, CPI data, consumer. Okay, guys, somebody has to mute their mic right now or else I'm going to mute everybody. Please. Thank you. So the CPI data is very important, and that is the consumer price, in, uh, that's inflation data, consumer price index, and um, related to the PPI, which is a producer price index. And anyway, these are economic terms. I repeat again, go to Investopedia, type them in, learn on your own what these things are. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and explain the basic definitions of these things. So, and then we have Fed speakers, Federal Reserve uh, uh, speakers, governors on the Federal Reserve, two of them. So a lot of Fed speakers this week, very important, very important. Then we cross over, that's, we, now we have crossed into Wednesday. Uh, the uh, mortgage applications, quite important. We need the, the health of the housing market has been going very strong with, um, with these um, all time low interest rates lots of activity on the housing front. So that's going to be an important number to watch. Then we cross into Thursday. Remember, Wednesday is always hump day. So generally speaking, if we climb into Tuesday, you have a high probability, almost a 80% probability that you're going to have a down Wednesday. 
It also has to do with a lot of technical resets on the option side, and uh, and that's you know. So Wednesday's you know, if we climb into Wednesday, then generally Wednesday will have at least one sharp pullback, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon. It's highly likely. So from a trade management standpoint, you have to be aware of that. Then we cross into Thursday, big big day. We have jobless num jobless claims numbers, very important. Uh, we have. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the most important number of the day. Then we cross into Friday, August 14th, getting towards that middle of the month. Uh, and that has uh, very important numbers coming up. We have retail sales, productivity and cost, industrial production, business inventories, and most importantly, consumer sentiment. Two of the most important numbers are retail sales and consumer sentiment. Consumer sentiment is what drives the US market. 80% of our gross domestic product is consumer spending. So consumer sentiment is very important. Our consumers retrenching and saying, okay, they're not gonna buy for, you know, they're not looking that optimistic, then obviously the market is going to take a minor hit at that point. Let's see what happens. So industrial uh, retail sales, uh, industrial production, very important. A business inventory is equally important, but these are the most important numbers. That's it for the economic side. Let's move on. Done. Now, now we're going to get into. I'm going backwards today, so then we're going to do the charts at the end. So now we're going to look at. Uh, now we're going to look at uh, earnings. Big money makers across the board. We have delivered phenomenal earnings most recently. There's so many I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, you guys can certainly go to the Twitter feed. You know my ER trades that I put out there. The choices. We had Zillow, which went through the roof. Uh, we had uh, Carvana, CVNA, uh, the the auto uh, vending uh, system of buying cars, whatever. Carvana's go went through the roof uh, after being down uh, pre-market. I mean, sorry, after the earnings came out, then it turned around, went up thirty-one dollars. Uh, we had uh, VMC, Vulcan Materials, great, great, strong earnings, and we have had very strong earnings, as you all know, on Apple and all those uh, uh, Amazon, uh, even Booking.com, which is the old price line. Uh, lots of lots of great earnings that, uh, that that have come out, and we have participated in. And just mentioning just a couple, you know, just a few. So earnings trades are are um, like I said, they are a fast uh, way to make a quick buck. We do a, a basket strategy. Somebody please mute their mic. Rick, I think it's you, so I need to mute you. Please. Okay, that's better. So, um, so basically, uh, you got. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, you, I've already explained this before. I'll do it again quickly. If let's say there are seven or eight earnings that I handpicked that I uh, from my list and I put it out there, I showcase a couple of them, uh, like I do. Uh, you know, sort of giving you a a a, a preview, um, a sneak peek then up to you how you do it you know we do a basket strategy so buy a diversified one some of them are going to go through the roof one or two are going to crap out and then some of them will just go up a little bit but the ones which go through the roof they really go through the roof all right that's the way it goes so net net you generally come out ahead some days all of them let's say out, out of the five or six of them seven of them are like five of them are down, well, that's not a good day, right? But then you don't really get blown out that much because you are not really putting all your eggs in one basket or one stock. So that's the way I look at it. So getting into August 10th, uh, I'm going to be take, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, at home. I'll be looking at uh, canopy growth. I'll be looking at. Uh, I haven't done GoGo -Go in a long time, but I'll say, take a look. The big boy movers are stocks like Meli, Mercado Libre. That is the Google of Latin America, and this is a huge mover. I'm talking some sometimes 30, 40 bucks. We'll take a look at the chart. So this is a big one. Options are equally expensive, so you can either pay some uh, way out of the money calls, which would be cheaper, or or you can buy one or two shares, or whatever, 10 shares. I don't know. All right, it's a $1,200 stock. So it can very easily be up 50 to 100 or down, you know, 50 to 100. So, 
Stocks part is great, I think, is because let's say you have one share or two shares, that's 1200 or 2400 bucks, you know. And again, I'm not in the business of telling you what how much you need to buy. It's your business. Um, if it goes up 50 points or 100 points and you have two shares, uh, right there, you made some nice coin, which you can sell after hours till 8 p.m. It's not rocket science, right? On semiconductor, I'll be taking a look at uh, Royal Caribbean would be an interesting play to see what they say. Then I have, then we have had one of our past huge winners that we bought at IPO and it zoomed up to almost $100 uh, from the 20 some dollar range. Went to actually 99.50 is Schrodinger. So this one is certainly going to be an interesting one to watch, but here's the problem. This is before the open. So we're not really set up for this earnings. So I'm kind of, I just realized this is, it's going to be after the fact, so we don't, we will not have time to look at it because it's before the market. And I didn't put these earnings trades on Friday, so cross that out. But these are the stocks we'll certainly be watching, no question about it. Let's move on after the close. Now we have a chance to participate in them. Let's see what's there. Uh, lots of little biotechs. Lots of you know, these are. You know, these are very interesting biotech. Some of them can really run like a monster. So I'd be looking at Asperion. I'd be looking. I'll have to do a little homework on that because I haven't traded these in a while, but I'm just marking them. Are you guys following me so far? Yes, no? Yes. Yes. Good. Sounds good. All right. Okay, let's see here what we got. Let's get the pen. All right. So I just showed you. I'll be taking a look at them and see whether or not these are worth doing. This one, this one. Hellzheim Hertz. That's going to be an interesting one. Isn't the camp company bankrupt yet? But then it moves like a monster because, you know, they come up with something, getting some money or whatever, and then it jumps up like crazy. This is a serious stock. I see UI Medical. No one talks about. This is a big mover. If I'm right, we can take a look at this chart too a bit tonight. I see UI is a uh, $177 stock. And, And the chart looks a little crappy, but that doesn't matter. That means it's pretty much, you know, kind of cheap. So we'll still look at it. But this is a serious company. Then we have, uh, what else are we looking at? Ramp is one to look at. We're going to be looking at, uh, and you guys can write this down and look at the charts yourself. You don't have to wait for me to, you know, to show you that. Uh, Sunrun is definitely one to look at. Solar company, very much in the news. Tilray. You know, it's a cheap stock now. It's only seven and a half dollars. It's worth the play. That's the uh, cannabis stock. And then there is Zoom Info. This has nothing to do with Zoom, by the way. And uh, a lot of uh, traders have before have accidentally bought the stock, not on my service, but other places where it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reasonably new IPO came out uh, um, in June. And, uh, and it's worth a look. I just looked at the chart on my other end. It's worth a look. Okay. So there we go. So that's for tomorrow. Then we move on to Tuesday. And Tuesday, as we can see, earnings are starting to you know wind down because most of the other big ones have already come out. So uh, we're going to look at um, BNTX. So we're going to take a look at it. That's uh, Pfizer's uh, co-partner in the COVID-19. These are the guys really coming out with uh, all the good stuff. BNTX, we have played it before. It's a, it's a pretty big mover. Um, Canada Goose is also a nice uh, trading uh, type of stocks. Lumentum, certainly. This is an Apple supplier. Neo, certainly in play. Cheap stock, electric vehicle, Chinese, uh, they call it the Chinese Tesla. So this one is worth a look, uh, worth a trade. With NEO and stuff, I'd rather just buy the stock instead of worrying about the option, even though options are dirt cheap, they might not have an equal type of volatility, implied volatility move. 
So in other words, you might not get paid even if the stock moves up 5%, 10%, but you get paid if you buy the stock. After the close, we have uh, the restaurant play, Red Robin, worth looking at. These other names, I actually have no clue. Okay, I don't. So unless I check them, I will have to pass. Let's go on Wednesday morning. This is before the market, before the open. We have uh, Brinker, certainly one to, you know, the big restaurant holding company. This is, this is definitively uh, uh, a mover back and forth. So we'll certainly take, you know, uh, uh, put that on the list as a, uh, as a trade. And then we have VIP shop, which is similar to JD.com, big online retailer, luxury online retailer, primarily in China. And those guys have been doing quite well. So we will certainly take a look at that. Let's move on. Crossing over into Wednesday after the market. All right, gentlemen, we have, uh, I, I'll have to take a look at this. I haven't traded this uh, in a while, but um, this is going to, this is an interesting one. But this is more interesting. One Life Healthcare. It is on my list. I've traded it twice. Uh, I have. Uh, this was a bunch of weeks ago. This is similar. It's a telehealth company. Okay, One Main Health. One Life Healthcare. I'm sorry. So O N E M is uh, this is going to be their first earnings, I believe, because they came public. Let me make sure I'm saying it. One second, I'm just checking on my other screen. Yeah, they came public in February. So this is their uh, second, second earnings uh, uh, reporting. So this will be, if they come up with strong earnings, I can assure you the stock will zoom higher. It is a uh, $30 stock, well liked by a lot of uh, growth fund managers and certainly very much in play in this climate that we live in with COVID-19 and everything. We have Cisco, it's always a play, you know, goes up a bit, up and down. We will take a look at uh, Small Direct Club. This, these are, Small Direct Club is a pretty long-term kind of investment play. They're in a great spot and all kinds of good stuff. So could be very interesting. Revolve is another one I'm gonna be uh, looking at that is a retail uh, play. Revolve Group, I don't know that much about it, but uh, I have traded it before. So let's move on. What's Vroom? I don't know, but I like the name. Um, I've heard it. Anyone know what Vroom is? Let me see this. So Vroom is actually a new IPO, came out in, in, in uh, ooh, nice looking chart, wow. It came out in, um, it came out, one second, guys. So here's Vroom. So it came out IPO in uh, sometimes in June. And uh, that's pretty good looking. You know, came out around 38 bucks, shot up to 60. This is a weekly chart. And now it's at 72. So it just, uh, it just kind of broke out. So 60 is the floor. So this should be an interesting play. All right. Keep this on the side. Then we have, uh, so right there. All right, then we have NetTees, big, big online gamer in, uh, in China. Monster, monster stock, look at these. These are monster stocks. They go up big, nice looking chart. There's no question about it. And this stock could really zoom. Like really, you know, make a substantial move. The implied volatility on these things are 30, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Calls are reasonably expensive, not outrageous. So uh, one has to basically figure out, you know, what do you want to do? But they're big movers. Like uh, on the daily, this is what it looks like. You can see here. In July, it shot up. In one day, it went from 
450 to 503 that's $53 overnight. Pull back, it's creating a cup. Now it's pulling back towards these levels. So for these stocks to move 10, 15, 20 bucks is nothing. All right? But you can clearly see that the overall trend, and this stock has been charted before, that's why the lines are still there. Uh, the overall trend is still higher. One thing I forgot to mention at the onset as we were talking about economic numbers and stuff, I thought futures were going to be down quite a bit more given the impasse with the government stimulus package, uh, given the, given the um, actions to ban TikTok and you know the attack on Chinese companies overall, um, to ban them here and there. Some senators thinking about delisting Chinese companies, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine, whatever they want to do. Eventually, business always wins. So the bottom line is, uh, I thought futures would be down like at least like 10 points, 12 points, but it looks like they're flat. They're only down a buck. That's because of all the other activity that's going on. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We never really want futures down like freaking 20, 30 points handles, you know, and then we have to dig ourselves out of the hole in the morning and still make money. We've done that a lot of times, as you all know, but it, it just requires a lot more work. So this is a good sign. This is a good sign. Shouldn't speak too fast. All of a sudden, futures are going to plummet like 30 points. That's what happens with uh, Globex futures. So uh, net tees we have, we have Tapestry. That's the old coach. I think that's another uh, uh, one to play. No, you know, pretty... I haven't played that recently because it is beaten up. So if it moves, it moves. What if they come up with slightly lesser loss? What if their guidance is a little bit better than expected, you know, going forward? The stock could very easily, in my opinion, jump up to $18. That's a lot. Okay, that's a lot. Because for a, a, a it jumps from four to 14. And these are great ideas that I'm kind of sharing with you right away before I put them out during the week. You can you guys can always replay this recording and write them down and you know do your own little homework a bit. That's a 30% move, 28% move. If it just gets up here, and that's tapestry, that's the old coach. Then we have uh, um, I have I normally don't play these tanker stocks, but uh, you can certainly take a look at it. I'll probably buy a few shares or some real cheap calls. Because anything with a 15 to 20 to $30 price range, the calls are all pretty cheap. They're between a buck to maybe two and a half dollars, three bucks. So it's not like trying to buy a net tease call or net ease, I'm sorry, net ease call or uh, an Amazon call where you, you know, it's like one call is like $2,100 or 3,000 bucks. It's crazy, but that's just the way it is. Um, then let's move on to. Let's uh, let's move on to Thursday after the close. Why aren't there no earnings on Friday? Is Friday a holiday? It's not, right? Anyone? Friday's not a holiday. Okay, then we have. It's funny that there's no earnings on Friday. Normally there is in the morning. So um, then Everybody's we have. Everybody's in the Hamptons. Yeah, that's such a cliche. You know, <laughs> but uh, as if everybody just only goes to the Hamptons. But yes, you know, that's that's an old Wall Street cliche. Just so you guys, you know, some of you guys who might not know, it's like everyone's just lying around the Hamptons not doing anything. But there is a difference, a huge difference, just so all of you realize. The world is not run by those Hamptons traders anymore. The world is run by artificial intelligence, black boxes known as algorithmic high frequency trading intelligent machines. So it doesn't really matter who's at their desk. First of all, no one's at their desk, right? And um, most people are not at their desk, you know, because of COVID-19. So machines run the business and we go with the machines. Um, so anyway. So on, on uh, Thursday, we have uh, this explained to you, and then uh, Baidu. Baidu's chart is actually pretty damn good. Uh, Baidu, if they come up with decent earnings, but however, they are feeling the pressure of the, the US political pressure on Chinese companies, uh, as you know. And, uh, and so Baidu might be a victim of that, but I don't know. Uh, the stock seems to 
you know, the stock seems to be holding out pretty damn good. So looking at this chart here, um, it is a, uh, hold on a sec. It's a very large, going back to the beginning of the year, that's an inverse head and shoulder, complete ramp up, all these gap opens. And I haven't really traded by doing a while, but I need to get into it because these stocks really move. And, um, and China has a deluge of economic numbers that's coming out even now. Their inflation numbers probably just came out. That's why futures turn. And there is, and they have over the past couple of weeks, over the past couple of months, their economic numbers have been moving up very strongly. Okay. And that is a big plus. So Baidu uh, 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 being uh, the Google of China uh, is um, Baidu.com uh, could be a huge beneficiary of that. And that's another major, uh, major thing that's coming out on, and I forgot to show that on the economic numbers i should do the whole one which shows the international one too so this deluge of numbers if they show a acceleration in economic growth or an improvement in economic growth then it's going to be it's going to be great for overall stocks and of course the chinese stocks so this one is a good looking chart um and uh you can see here that the stock moved five five dollars on uh on friday it was 121, it closed at 125. So not bad, not bad. And the options are reasonable. So if Baidu does have blowout numbers, uh, the stock is literally gonna jump $10. And you're gonna make some real sweet money on the calls. So I'm definitely gonna be playing that. Next one. We have, uh, this is called the Netflix of China, IQYI, IQ. This is what the chart looks like. And it's not a bad looking chart either. There. It's a very large sheet. The drawings are already in place because at one point or another, we have traded these stocks. That's why the drawings are still saved on, on Thinkorswim. Um, you can see here, this is a, this is a uh, definitive floor. It's a quadruple bottom. One, two, three, four. All around $15. And this certainly looks to me like a technical cup and handle, which generally has the propensity or high probability of making a breakout towards the primary trend, which is this, it's a bull flag. So if it does that, you could get two, three, four bucks out of this, which would be a fantastic uh, a return on the options and a great return on the actual stock itself, given that it's a $22, $22 stock. So that's IQ, don't ask me to pronounce it, IQE or whatever the name is, you know, so right there. So I'd be looking at, uh, I'd be certainly looking at Baidu. I'd be looking um, at AMAT for sure. Uh, that's a, you know, semiconductor equipment uh, maker been around forever, one of the granddaddies of the business, certainly a uh, strong company. So, and then I'd be looking at uh, this one. I don't know how to pronounce it, but Page Seguro Digital, it's a South American um, social uh, company. I know that it is uh, uh, pretty hot with, a cert uh, with uh, certain traders and, uh, and it's a good looking chart. How do you pronounce this? Page. Can somebody pronounce it for me? No? Okay, fine. Page uh, Seguro. Page Seguro, yeah. It's uh, uh, PAGS, like PAGS they call it. So this is again, kind of charted out because at one point or another we looked at it. Oh, that's a nice looking chart. So it is a nice looking chart. You know, it's a, it's a may. It, this was where it was back on uh, April, wow, March of 2018. This is a significant uh, uh, level right there. That's March of 2018. Now we're two and a half years later, and it's right there. So if we, if this is breaking out, it's going to be a substantial multi-year breakout, as I've shown in some other stocks. 
And when you have a multi-year breakout, it's a see you later story. It's going to, it's literally going to try to rush towards the highs, not in one day, but the earning, strong earnings is always the, 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 the fuel that companies need in order for other managers, other traders to look at. And technically the chart changes. So technically it shows up on the radar of a lot of technical traders who are doing scans to find stocks. And, um, and then there you go. So I kind of like this one. Pax. This is good. What's it looking like on the daily? Not bad. It's like a flying wing. That's an inverse head and shoulder. Head, left shoulders, 